thanks to this short video on color correction. There's a difference between color correction and color grading. Color grading is when you apply a particular look to your film. Think Instagram filters, think the orange and teal looks, think matrix, that green iron hue that went over the entire film. That's color grading. We're gonna be doing that in project two. Color correction is when you look at the footage provided and you fix the shadows, the contrast, the saturation, the temperature, the tint. You fix up bad footage or fix up inconsistent footage. That's what you're going to do in this project. We're gonna look at color correction. Color grading will be done in project two. With that, friends, let's get started. When Mr. Yost and I shot this footage, we set up the cameras so that we would have to color correct in post-production. In looking at how to color correct, we're gonna come over and we're gonna open up the Lumetri color panel. Again, if you don't have this panel, go to Windows and open up oop, Lumetri color. It'll populate over here on the side. So if yours probably looks like this the first time you open it. The one that we wanna look with is basic correction. Here's my clip. And what I found when manually color correcting, it is best to start at the tone, working from the bottom up. Mr. Yost might have some tips and tricks on how to color correct, but it's really personal preference. And what I do is grab this slider and kind of move it around. And I'm not looking at the number over here. I'm looking at my work panel. So I'm actually going to make that a little bit larger, just so that I can see the screen a little bit more starting with the blacks kind of play around slide it and then i move it slower and slower and slower until i get it around where i want it to be that looks pretty good and then i grab the whites and do the same thing shadows and some students are really afraid to move they're like i don't know what to do just play around with it right you can always change it back right you can always go back to zero so just kind of play around and see what you like with the shadows like that highlights Ooh. That's valid. Like. All right, let me go back to my workspace. Windows, workspaces, reset to save layout. That's how you manually adjust it. You start with the blacks, you move back up. You can also, if you're like, well, why even bother with the highlights of 3.4? I want to change this back to zero. You can just highlight or click on that, type in zero, and it goes back to where it was. I had it at 3.4. Thank you very much. That is manually adjusting it. There is a way that you can have Premiere Pro do that for you instead. So I'm going to click over here to track two. There's Mr. Yoast. I'm not going to go through it. I'm going to click on this word auto and boop, does it for me. Yeah. So you can see, do I like that one better or do I like that one better? Don't know. It's really up to you. That's the one that I did. And there's go over here, click auto. So now I'm just going to jump back and forth between their screen. Fine. Which do you like better? Uh, don't really know. I like mine better because, <laughs> because I spent some time doing it. But for these tutorials, if I were to be honest with you, a lot of times I just hit auto and move on. I spent a lot of time color correcting on my short films, on my documentaries, on things that I'm publishing out to the world that aren't these kind of how-to videos. I spent a lot of time with color correction. It's always better to set our cameras up so that we have to do as little color correction as possible. So take some time when you are setting up your camera to get your exposures, to get your ISOs, to, to do all of the settings that we're gonna teach you about with the cameras so that you don't have to do as much on the back end over here. The other thing that we're going to look at is this temperature and tint. You can see that Mr. Yost and I purposely set, set the cameras for two different settings. This was shot for fluorescent light and this was shot for sunlight coming in through the windows. And you can see that there's a much cooler tone to this one and a much warmer tone to this one. And that's where this temperature comes in. If I start looking at this one, blues, let's scroll that down. It's a very sad moment, it's blue, right? If you want that look in your film, great. Your temperature goes up, it's a warmer color. So you're gonna have to decide whether you want your film to have a cooler setting or a warmer setting. If you want it to have a cooler setting, you're going to have to come over here to these back half of the clips and change around with your temperature to bring this down into the blues, maybe mess around with your magentas a little bit so that you get what would be a, ooh, too much, so that you get what would be a consistent shot look from over here. And you're going to have to play around with this one a little bit, maybe bring it up warmer just a little bit. 
Um, but you're going to have to mess around with these so that when you go from clip 4 to clip 5, there's not a jarring difference between the look of your piece. One thing I wanted to point out, if I hit reset, all that does is change the tone. It doesn't change anything about the temperature. So if I want to reset the temperature, I have to manually go in here, click 0, and click 0, and then it resets it all. Or if you want your piece to have a warmer feel to it, then you're going to have to change the front half of the clips. So you're going to have to bring these temperatures up so that you get a warmer feeling to your clips. You're going to have to take some time to get the settings so that between going from 4 to 5, there's not a noticeable jarring difference. So I messed around a bit, and I've got my warmer tones and my cooler tone camera shots to be pretty close. Uh, they're not perfect, but if I look at 4 and I look at 5, eh, they're pretty close, much better than the originals. Slide this out. I'm going to drop in the original. So there's my original 4, there's my original 5, and if I look, that's shot 1, that's shot 2. That's vastly different. If I were watching this, I could see a huge jump between 4 and 5. Let's, let's watch. And with artificial head. Got it. See, that's a huge jump between the two. So we want to avoid that. Let me just delete those. Grab the rubber bandy guy, slide back over here. So again, my settings for four, my settings to five. You're going to play around with this and you're going to find something that works for you. Once you have them set up the way that you like, what you're going to do is copy the attributes. So you're going to go in here. We're going to come up to edit, copy, and then on this next one, paste attributes. And the attribute that we want to bring in, uncheck everything else except for effects and Lumetri color. That's what we want. Click OK. And now you'll see my settings over here are the exact same. So I don't have to go in and manually adjust clip six because I already spent all that time adjusting clip five. They are the exact same attributes over here. You could copy the numbers down and just type them all in, but that's crazy. Why would you do that? The other way, because I'm super lazy, I want to grab all of them. To do that, I'm left clicking on my mouse, dragging, getting them all. And now I'm going to right click on my mouse, come up here, paste attributes, Lumetri colors checked, click OK. And now all of them have the exact same attributes. Now, one thing that we'll note is some of them, and this one's a little bit darker, that use the same values as over here, but it's a little bit darker. So I'm probably going to have to come back in and play around with this one just a little bit so that it doesn't look the way that it does. So it's not perfect. You're going to have to adjust each clip individually. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. Now, to fix up the first half of the video, I'm going to take my attributes from clip four and apply them to all of these others in the beginning. So I'm going to activate clip four, copy, click drag so I get all of them, right click and paste attributes and make sure I'm just bringing in Lumetri Color, click OK, and now you can see that all of these initial clips have the same color correction as clip four. Again, not perfect between the front half and the back half, but probably pretty good. Later on, we're going to see how to affect all of them at the same time and get a much better representation, but that's our next project. For this project, this is pretty good. So what you're going to do is spend some time color correcting your clips, adjusting the tone and temperature so that it looks consistent between the front half and the back half of your footage. So there you have it. That's how we can use the Lumetri Color Panel within Premiere Pro to do our color corrections, changing the darkness, the temperatures, to get a consistent look to our footage. That's all for this episode. We'll see you in the next one.